Hello lovely internet strangers. In today's video, I'm going to do an introduction of sorts to a series of videos that I want to do about books that are not feminist or anti-feminist. I alluded to this in the past in my mid-2019 channel update, but now that I'm actually going to do a video about one of these books, I thought I would give an overview of the five books at the top of my mind as part of this ongoing series. I'll probably call this something like five books that blew my mind, five books that completely changed changed my thinking, or five books that changed my life, although that sounds a little bit dramatic. So I want this video to be relatively short, so I'm just going to give a basic overview of these books, not going in depth on them, just telling you what they are and how they fit into my life, how they blew my mind, affected my thinking, in broad strokes terms. These are not going to be in a ranked order by which one is the best because they're all very different from one another. They will be in chronological order, though not by publication date, by the date which I read them. I I felt now that I had posted my video about my political compass test results, I could finally kind of delve a little bit more into videos that deal with politics, even though this is not going to become like a libertarian evangelist channel because that's really not me and that's not what I'm interested in, but this will cover another aspect of my intellectual landscape, so to speak. So let's get started. The first book chronologically, according to my reading history, is Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt. If you know nothing about economics, I cannot recommend this book enough. It is not that long, it is very readable, highly accessible, and it will give you the basic overview on everything you need to know. And from there, you can explore to your heart's content all the more advanced economic tomes, but this is the place to start in my biased but humble opinion. To give you an idea of what you can expect, basically he crystallizes his point in a single sentence, which is, the art of economics consists in looking not merely at the immediate, but at the longer effects of any act or policy. It consists in tracing the consequences of that policy, not merely for one group, but for all groups. And then each chapter he discusses this principle using different examples, and even if you end up reading it and disagreeing with some of the things that he's saying, it gives you a good basis to learn what you didn't know before and go on your own economic intellectual journey. I read this book in July 2014. That was just a few months after I met my husband. I was a hardcore intersectional feminist and lefty SJW, and we would get into arguments about things, and it quickly became apparent to me that I knew nothing about economics especially, but also history, political theory, and so on, but I figured economics was a good place to start. So my husband, boyfriend at the time, obviously, recommended this book to get me started. And I did not realize when I cracked open that book that it was the first step toward a long intellectual journey, a falling down of a rabbit hole that would lead to me unraveling everything that I believed, crumbling it down to the ground, and rebuilding it from scratch. So this book is just a little bit close to my heart. Book two on this list, I do not own a copy of. I read it as an ebook from the library, so I will flash a copy of the cover on screen. The book is called Catastrophic Care, Why Everything We Think We Know About Healthcare is Wrong by David Goldhill. This book really blew my mind open. I really knew nothing about how healthcare worked in this country, and healthcare is always a hot button issue, but it was especially a hot button issue during the summer of 2016 when I read this book. I decided it was time to learn something about the topic, and I'm so glad I picked up this book. Healthcare and health insurance is a really important topic for me, especially because I have dealt with a lot of health issues in my life and continuing to struggle with a lot of health issues in my life. And the whole system is just totally fucked. But I mean that in a different way than most people do when they say that. Most people, when they say that, they mean they think we should have single payer healthcare. Government money, aka other people's money, should pay for it. Healthcare is a human right. I am the opposite. I am a large proponent of free market healthcare and why is beyond the scope of this video. But like I said with economics in one lesson, even if you end up disagreeing with his conclusions, the data that he lays out about how the system works and its history in this country will be really illuminating to most people because most people haven't looked into it just like I hadn't before I read this book. You can look at the same data and draw different conclusions based on what your personal values are. But that's why I can recommend this book to anyone because the data is there and it is 
mind blowing. At least I thought so. He really breaks down the difference between health care and health insurance and how health insurance differs from other kinds of insurance. He just really lays out how the way the system is structured leads to bad outcomes and why. And these are all things that had never occurred to me, really blew my mind open. And it's something I think about all the time as I navigate this Byzantine system that we have. For the rest, you can stay tuned for whenever I decide to make a full video about this book. Book three is Illiberal Reformers by Thomas C. Leonard. This is a very well-loved copy, as you can see from this rip down here. I took this book with me pretty much everywhere when I was reading it. I was obsessed. This book was life-changing. This book changed the way that I look at politics, the way I look at the world. This is such a foundational book, in my opinion, to understand the current landscape. It's a history of the origins of the progressive movement at the turn of the 20th century. It's not that long, but it's very dense, filled with a lot of proper nouns, you know, people's names, organizations, some of which you will have heard of, like Woodrow Wilson or the Brookings Institution, but others which you will have never heard of, but nevertheless had a major impact on the development of the administrative state and the current state of politics. This is going to be the first book I'm going to do a video on because I took extensive notes on this one that are already typed and ready to be turned into an outline. So that video is in my queue and I'm really excited about it. I'm just going to have to keep myself from making way too many videos about it more than anyone wants to watch because that's how much I love this book. When you watch my video about this book in the future, you will learn about the social gospel, the role of eugenics in the early progressive movement, and how they deliberately used the emergence of science to create a new religion for social control. You will learn about the rise of the administrative state. You will learn about technocrats and the rise of experts. I read this book in April 2017, so that was a few months after I had pretty much decided to stop calling myself a feminist, although I had not yet started calling myself an anti-feminist. I'm the kind of person way before I was an intersectional feminist when I was a kid who always just wanted to go to the source. Okay, so someone's telling me this thing over here, but where did they get that from? Are they interpreting what they read correctly? People are stupid. They probably didn't get it exactly correct. I want to see for myself what they actually said. And so this is why I read all of these books. And this book in particular, he uses primary sources. So he's not making up what these progressives believed. He's using their actual writings. The fourth book on this list is The Moral Case for Fossil Fuels by Alex Epstein. I think this has a great cover as someone who used to work in public publishing. Very eye-catching. And the spine is also really great. Important stuff. So I picked up this book in November of 2017 in an attempt to learn more about climate change and energy, which was something I knew very little about. And this book is really great because, again, even if you don't agree with his arguments, he lays out a ton of data and he includes all of his sources and he encourages you to look at the sources for yourself. And he has a philosophy background, so he lays out right at the beginning what his assumptions are essentially, his premise, and that if you disagree with that premise, then you are definitely not going to agree with the conclusions in this book. So he is just letting you know ahead of time because he's following a sort of proof style, you know, logic. This book really opened my eyes to a lot of the ways that the so-called experts on the topic, their predictions have been proven wrong, and also the realities of making a transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy, and particularly how that would affect the third world, which is only still in the early stages of its industrial revolution compared to the West. He talks about nuclear energy. He really just gives a great overview on everything. So again, even if you ultimately disagree with him, I think you can't go wrong as far as a book that clearly lays things out, provides plenty of data, provides the sources, and it's a really accessible read despite it having so much data in it, and it's not that long. All right, on to the last book, book number number five on this list is On Liberty by John Stuart Mill. I hope most of you watching this video have at least heard of On Liberty by John Stuart Mill if you have not read it. It is, in my opinion, the definitive book on free speech, on its history, on the arguments for it, why it's important, and really nuanced parts of the argument that generally don't come up in current discussions. When I was reading that book, I was struck by how I felt like he could have just been describing current year, nothing had changed in terms of the battlefield for free speech, so to speak. I will say this book is slightly less accessible than the other books in terms
terms of the old timey language that he uses, but I think it's worth it going to the primary source and it's not super long. I obviously picked this book up because free speech is incredibly important to me. Free speech is probably more important to me than any other issue. I can get along with people who believe all kinds of different things, very different from me, as long as they have that foundation of freedom of speech. And I don't mean some surface level understanding of freedom of speech in terms of, well, I should just be able to say whatever I want. I mean, in terms of the necessity of freedom of speech for the free flow of information and also respecting other people enough to give them the right to hear everything and decide for themselves. Freedom of speech is not just about a right to speech. It is about a right to listen. Mill said this all way better than me, but that's why I picked that book up to go to the source on freedom of speech. And if it's a topic that you want to learn more about to really get a foundation in it and to arm yourself with arguments, On Liberty is definitely the book to read. So I hope you enjoyed this overview. I hope you look forward to seeing more detailed videos about these books in the future. Illiberal Reformers is coming soon. The other ones I'm not sure about yet because I have lots of ideas for this channel, lots of content I want to make, and it all takes time. Can't do it all at once. I would love to hear if any of you have read these books already and what you think about them, whether you loved them, hated them, or were just neutral on them. And I would also love to hear about your books that changed your life, changed your thinking, blew your mind. I'm always looking for recommendations to add to my never-ending to-read list. So thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and I will have more content for you very soon.